drugs. But if Kirkland ended up on drugs, she says what led her there is a story that could be told by any dancer. The ugly truth behind the beauty of the American ballet world. You know that people out there would like to tear... And when we reported on it, we got angry mail from dancers who said Kirkland was trying to blame ballet for a sickness all her own. But we also received a lot of calls and letters insisting that Kirkland is right, that American dancers ruin their bodies and sacrifice everything for a ballet world that turns its back when someone gets in trouble. And Kirkland, who always went to extremes, got in serious trouble. In a sense, she lived the kind of tragedy great ballets are made of. And only great ballerinas, like Gelsie Kirkland, can dance. For most of her life, Gelsie Kirkland has been dancing every little girl's romantic fantasy. Her speed and energy and grace made her the most exciting ballerina of her generation. Dancing with ballet's greatest partners. Dazzling audiences around the world. But the relentless drive for perfection that elevated her to the top of the ballet world also nearly ended her life. There were dancers in the wings crying for me. I was in great pain. I had absolutely no control. And they were literally afraid I might fall over and, and die on stage. What Kirkland was dying from was cocaine. And the beauty of the ballet on stage concealed the pain of her life off stage. As here, when she was dancing on drugs. It almost destroys everything. I'm very lucky to be alive. Very, very lucky. But if Kirkland ended up on drugs, she says what led her there is a story that could be told by any dancer. The ugly truth behind the beauty of the American ballet world. That dancers are conditioned to be passive, silent, even about the brutal training in the ballet studio. When I was about 11 years old, one of my teachers uh, at the School of American Ballet said, Gelsie, turn out your feet. And I was already standing like this, and, and I would have such narrow hips, and my knees were going this way, and I was in such pain. And I was doing plie absolutely like this, and she said, turn out more. Well, you know, I said, turn out, uh, you really mean that. I, I just gave her the evil eye, and I said, like this, like this. You want to see me turn out? I'll turn out. And I, I mean, that's, I was crippled by the time I was 12. To live with the pain and dance with it, that was the code. Dancing not for her own eyes, but for the eyes of one man, the man who created ballet in America, the legendary Mr. B, the late George Balanchine. She was only 15 when he asked her to join his New York City ballet company as one of his baby ballerinas. Her talent so impressed Balanchine that he choreographed new ballets for her, pushing her further, faster than any other ballerina. And of course, you were the fastest. You were the speediest. <laughs> you were the most daring. Yes, I think I tried harder to please Balanchine than anybody. And what was the physical cost? Well, the physical cost was that it killed you to do it over a period of time because you had to deal with unnatural speed. You were pushed to the limit in terms of what your body can take. Did Balanchine care about your body? He cared how it looked, but not how it felt. And once, when she was too sick to dance, he found a way to make sure she did. By giving her some pills, she says he told her were vitamins. 
And I took them and I went out on stage and I was like a little bird who <laughs> didn't know from, I didn't know where I was. I, I enjoyed myself. I thought everything was quite, quite jolly. And I looked down at the end of the ballet and my feet were, had a life of their own. <laughs> Some vitamin. Some vitamin, yeah. Kirkland and a whole generation of ballerinas not only danced the way Balanchine wanted them to dance, they tried to look the way he wanted them to look. When he became obsessed with a beautiful dancer named Suzanne Farrell, they did too. Balanchine used to ask me when I was going to grow into my head. He thought that my head was too big for my body. So since head shrinking was out of the question. <laughs> I, uh, you know, there were other ways to try and look like Suzanne Farrell. Namely, plastic surgery. Kirkland, as always, went to extremes. She had her earlobes trimmed and had silicone injected into her breasts, her ankles, and her lips. It was total insanity. Wait a minute. Silicone in your mouth? Yes. In your lips? Yes. Yeah. Because I felt that uh, he had such an obsession with her face. And the extraordinary thing was that she had slightly bucked teeth. I mean, it's an excruciating story. But everybody, all of my friends, were trying to imitate the shape of her mouth. Um, you know, I went to the dentist and said I would like buck teeth. But if she couldn't make herself the most beautiful ballerina, she could dance the way no one else had dared. From the cover of Time when she was 25, to her unequaled partnership with the finest male dancer of the decade, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Misha, who asked her to dance with him when he defected from the Soviet Union. beginning, it was a love affair on stage and off. Out of their partnership came a story too irresistible for Hollywood to ignore about a young American ballerina who falls in love with a brilliant Soviet dancer who abandons her. It was called The Turning Point. It was her story, only she wasn't there to dance it. You were supposed to be there. Yes. That in that yes. movie. What happened? I didn't want to play Amelia because I, I thought, well, everybody's going to mistake this for Gelsey. And this character is fluff. You know, she doesn't have anything between her ears. So what did you do? I starved myself. And by the summer, I was about 80 pounds. And got booted from the film. Right. Kirkland was suffering from anorexia and bulimia, self-induced starvation and throwing up. They are sicknesses that are rampant in the ballet world, a problem Kirkland traces again to the obsessions of George Balanchine. And he knocked on my chest and he said, you know, dear, what is important is to see bones. And he wanted you that way. He wanted you starved that thin? Down to the bone. Uh, that is what he believed was truly beautiful. So Gelsey Kirkland reached her turning point. Maybe it was the unending torment about her looks, or maybe her perfectionism, or the strain of her physical injuries, or maybe just the fact that her new dance partner and lover, Patrick Bissell, said he had what she needed, cocaine. So I went to the drug dealer and I said, listen, I have found what is going to solve all my problems. I'm going to go in, do class, do a hit before class, hit before rehearsal, and I'm going to be, have a state of mind which tells me, have confidence instantly, and just dance, enjoy yourself, and everybody else will, too. Time magazine called her uh, the most exciting young ballerina in the Western world today. We're very pleased to welcome to our show, Miss Gelsey Kirkland. I 
was happy as a lark. I liked the way I looked. I liked the way I thought about the way I looked. You have, for a long time, were obsessed with perfection in your work, <laughs> weren't you, Gelsey? Are you less obsessed now? Mm, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm obsessed with not being obsessed, you know? I'm always obsessed with something, so right now, I'm concentrating very hard on not being obsessed so mm. that I can work. You think they knew you were stoned? Do I look stoned to you? They had to know. I think so. Kirkland says they all knew. Her fellow dancers, the management of her company, the American Ballet Theater, and her former lover, partner, and artistic director, Barishnikov. I would do a rehearsal. I did a rehearsal with Misha once, and I was buckling over on my toes. I had Kleenexes on the side. I was blowing my nose. I had runny eyes. I kept saying stop, but I couldn't get my mouth open because it was so dehydrated from so much cocaine. And he was there to help me, and he just stood back and maybe said a few things and left. And it was never mentioned. Cocaine was never mentioned. Why? Well, that's the question. Why wasn't it dealt with? Why was there no policy about drugs? She says even one of her agents conspired to keep her dancing. Certainly one of my contracts was for uh, explicitly that I would work for my agent only if he supplied me with cocaine on a daily basis. You had that agreement with him? Yes. So you and Patrick Bissell danced your way across America on cocaine? Yes. We certainly weren't the only ones involved in drugs, that is for sure. But we were absolute terrors. And it's extraordinary that the word cocaine never came up. It didn't matter how many times I was fined, how many nights they knew we had obviously spent awake and came in with bug eyes. She's convinced what everyone wanted most was to avoid scandal and keep her dancing, literally dancing on her grave. It was like her greatest role, Giselle, the story of a peasant girl who, betrayed by her lover, goes mad and dies of a broken heart, but returns in death, dancing all night, to save her lover's life. But here, Gelsey Kirkland was rehearsing it and dancing it entirely on drugs. It is hard to imagine the proclaimed finest ballerina of the Western world stalking the streets at night to try to get cocaine so she could dance. I used to feel most at home in Harlem. Desperate for um, to be put into that state of mind that says I'm defeated. At the end of Giselle, the peasant girl goes back to the land of the dead. But for Kirkland, after three years of dancing on cocaine, after half a dozen brain seizures brought on by the drug, after all that, fate handed her another act for her ballet. We met outside a drug dealer's door at about, uh, what was it, one or two in the morning? Mm -hmm. uh, both of us, coincidentally, going to pick up something at the same time. Writer Greg Lawrence is now her husband. With his encouragement, she left the American ballet world. They helped each other conquer the cocaine. After a two-year absence from the stage, Gelsey Kirkland, now 33, is dancing again. In London with the Royal Ballet. But she plans to return to the United States soon full of ideas about new training techniques that will encourage young dancers to use their minds and minimize the damage to their bodies.
What do you tell a young ballerina who comes to you and says, I want to grow up and be just like you? Nobody said that late one. I would say, study something other than ballet. And use your mind and try to become an artist, not just a dancer. You won't find the answers in the steps themselves. By the way, we asked ballet management to be a part of that story, but the managers refused to comment. Nor have any American companies invited Gelsey Kirkland to dance with them since the piece was broadcast, though she has performed in Europe to standing ovations.